Hey, I want to hop on here and share a word of encouragement about family restoration. Uh, so if you are needing to see restoration in your family, or if you know someone that is, then maybe this is for you. Consider sharing it. Um, but I, so I had a dream on February 23rd. Um, and in this dream, I was in a retreat center and um, there was all these open areas and round tables and there was a convergence of families there. But then I also saw that there were also separate rooms, like kind of like hotel rooms where it would be like determined by family. And so what I saw was happening is that families were pulling away to spend time together um, kind of in their intimate room and then they would come and they would come out of there and then they would spend time with other families. And I also saw in the dream that um, there had just been a return of sons. Um, and there were many sons who had come home. And you know, when the scripture talks about us becoming sons of God, it's not exclusive to male or, or female. It's, it's, it, it includes um, sons and daughters. But I saw that many sons had come home. And so I saw that there was this flow that was happening where people were pulling aside and spending time together as families. Um, but then they were converging and I saw a friend of mine named Sarah. And when I saw her, I heard Herald of Family Restoration. Um, and as I ended up waking up from this dream, I was so struck by the, um, the agenda that had been set aside. Like literally there was such a, um, such a devotion to, um, the healing of hearts and families and the willingness to pull aside, to heal what was broken, to strengthen relationships. Um, and I was also just struck by the sense that God is multiplying the heralds of family restoration. I'm going to talk about what that means in just a minute. Um, but I feel like I have a word of encouragement that goes with this. And it's just been brewing in my heart this week and felt like there's people that need to hear this. And so, um, but so when you think about what a herald is, a herald will declare or proclaim something. And so, uh, when in the dream, uh, when I had this impression of God is multiplying the heralds of family restoration, um, I think that there's a couple of things in that for us to see. Uh, number one, there is power in what we declare out of our mouths. So we know from Genesis 128 that we were made in the image and likeness of God. And in the beginning, uh, when everything was chaos and, um, and there was darkness and void, he said, let there be light. And he spoke and light became right. Well, the same creative power that is in his mouth. Now we are not God, but we are made in his image. And the, and the word says that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And I believe that God is stirring, um, in our hearts and, um, wanting to release a fresh revelation that we can out of our mouths before anything even looks different, declare that my family is restored. This family I'm believing for is restored. This child that has wandered away from who they really truly are um, and is not walking in the kingdom, I can declare that they are restored and that the angelic actually looks for words that align with the heart of God to partner with, to go then perform those words. And so um, angels aren't just floating around. They actually... They actually, uh, they do many things, but one of the things that they do is they perform the word of God. Um, hey, Sarah, thank you. Um, and so, so we want to give angels something to partner with. We want to declare out of our mouths. And so I believe there's a, an encouragement for us. And what, what am I speaking? It's very, there's nothing wrong with saying the truth of like, okay, this is where my marriage are at, or this is where our family is at, or, um, this family member is estranged and speaking the facts. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, any more than there is if somebody has a sickness and they're believing for healing and they say, Hey, I have this sickness right now. I'm dealing with these symptoms in my body, but I believe that God wants to give us a fresh revelation that there's power in our mouths to declare prodigals are coming home. Families are being restored. Um, and then the other aspect of, uh, this whole idea of God is multiplying the heralds of family restoration is that, um, you know, Paul said that the, the, 
the gospel is not in word only, but in demonstration and power. And I believe that we are going to see such a demonstration of the gospel of the kingdom and families, unlike anything we've ever seen before. And it starts with, um, it starts with our hearts and it starts with a willingness to, um, to align our hearts with the heart of God for our family and then to embody, um, his heart in a very practical, tangible way. So you'll remember that in the dream, um, people were pulling aside and spending time with the family and just being really uh, connective, connecting with sons that had come home. And so I want to speak a word of encouragement about, about this. If you, if you have a situation in your family and you don't have the ability to do what I'm talking about right now, hold on because I'm going to actually speak to that next. Um, but what I was seeing is that God really is he is inviting us into an upgrade of how to steward our family relationships in a new way right now in this season. And God wants to give you literally divine strategy that looks like it may look like, like a really simple family rhythm. Like maybe, um, maybe your family is going every which direction, maybe you got sports going on or, um, uh, just weird work schedules, school schedules, uh, all of these different things. And it may be, be that the wisdom of God is coming to you and saying, Hey, let's get around the family dinner table, like at least once a week. Um, and even if we need to eat corn dogs and potato chips, <laughs> if we need to serve up something from HEB that came out of the ready food aisle and we need to put it on plates, um, and gather around and ask each other, Hey, how are you doing? Let's just connect. You know what? My family gets really silly sometimes with this. Kids are super wiggly. Like if you have young children, sometimes we will pull up knock knock jokes. Okay. We will, we will pull out some really, <laughs> some really interesting things just to keep their cheeks in the seat and engage at, at, at another level. Um, here's another, just, I'll just, this is for free. Okay. Um, so one, one favorite in our family is um rose roses buds and thorns okay so this is where like say you're going around and so roses will be like this was the part of your day that was like your favorite most beautiful satisfying part of your day okay so for my eight-year-old this would probably be like i put on a talent show for the neighbors again okay um the buds are buds are them sharing things that they're looking forward to i have a play date coming up or my birthday's coming up um and then thorns are like the hard places right like i fell down today riding my bike and i got a boo-boo and it still hurts and so like being able to hold space for the good the bad and the ugly and so that's just that's for free. That's kind of a tangent there, but coming back around. Um, so, so I believe that God is releasing wisdom and in the same is true. It doesn't matter if you're, if you're an empty nester, it doesn't matter if you have teenagers, God wants to give you the strategy of the hour to reach the heart of your family members. We know from his word, we know that we're here right now because he is a God who pursues. And so he reveals his nature through us as a God who pursues. And I wanna encourage you that there might be little simple tweaks like um, getting in the car, maybe you're taking your kids home from school and maybe that five, 10 minute drive, you're just really intentional about the way that you converse and the way you pursue their hearts in that time. And, and I just felt this echoing in my spirit today that, um, you know, these small things, these small decisive, decisive acts of intention are declarations that God is moving in our family and they will pay dividends. There will be a compounding effect to the things that you think are not that big of a deal. Um, reaching out, checking and seeing how someone is doing. Um, and I want to encourage you that the same thing is true with the prayer. You may right now be looking at something and I know many people, I talk, I talk to many people that their families are in very broken situations. Things look very hopeless. They look very dire. I want to encourage you that there is power in your decree and there is power in your heart posture. And so this is what I want to come back around to now. And this will apply to anybody, but this is especially to encourage those who feel kind of powerless right now because um, maybe there's some est estrangement in your family. Maybe the lines of communication aren't really open. 
Um, maybe people are not open to getting together, um, things like that. Um, I just heard this so strongly in my spirit that there is more power in your posture with God than you can possibly understand when it comes to the restoration of your family. And so this is what I mean. Um, you know, if somebody who's uh, in sports or things like that, right? Posture is everything, right? When you look at football players, I, it's really funny because I am not a sort of sports person and I'm using a sports analogy, but um, like in volleyball, like they teach you how to stand to be ready for the ball, right? So there is a posture that um, that is uh, is connected to an expectancy in the goodness of God, right? Psalm says, Psalms 23 says, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of our life. What would it look like for us to be convinced of that in the restoration of our families? And so um, very practically talking, when I talk about posture, um, so there is our alignment with the heart of God. Okay. So number one, I need oil in my lamp. Okay. So, so praying and uh, crying out for my family members and praying prayer requests, like having prayer lists, all super, super good, powerful. Do it. Have your prayer list. I remember my grandma when I was little, um, she, I, we would spend the night at her house and I would get up at like four in the morning to, uh, to go to the bathroom or whatnot. And she would be on the couch praying in the Holy ghost and calling out every single family member. I think there was like 50 of us calling our names out before the Lord. Um, so I believe that God meets us in our prayer list. But when I talk about oil, I'm talking about carving out time to be intimate with Jesus, to feast, literally feast on Jesus, to feast on his word, to meet with him in his, in the, in the scripture, to hear what he's saying to our hearts, to letting us minister to him, uh, let, that we get to minister to him and then he ministers to us. This is the place where we pour out all the things that are in our hearts that are brimming the, you know, if there's bitterness there, pour it out, right? Like if there's, if there's questions, if there's hurt there, pour it out. Um, we know that the shoulders of God are broad enough. He can take it. Like if you're offended at God, bring it to him, meet him in that place because there is a divine exchange and the divine exchange is usually messy, but there is a release of grace and there is oil that is imparted into our hearts. Whenever we lean into his heart and say like, I'm going to meet with you, God, there is literally fresh oil that God is wanting to pour into you for the season that you're in that like a lamp needs oil to keep burning. We need that oil on the inside of us. And that is part of the heart alignment and the posture that helps to bring about and partner with what God wants to do in terms of family restoration. Another aspect of that is forgiveness. I know that it's like, you know, it's like the big F word, right? Forgiveness. It's hard to forgive sometimes, but the Bible talks about it's crucial to walk in forgiveness. Forgiveness is not about trusting the, the person that you're forgiving. It's not about not having boundaries. It's not about entering into codependency. In fact, a proper understanding, a kingdom understanding of forgiveness um, and and relationship will actually set us free from codependency and bring us into secure attachment with like the Lord and help us to move in love for the one in front of us um, while acknowledging that we are separate from them, that we, we, we are able to have boundaries. And so forgiveness. So the wrestle of God, I choose to forgive. I choose to release them. You have no idea that there are actually there are things right now that may feel completely unforgivable, but when you come into a place and you declare, I forgive them, I release them. If God can forgive me and he can cancel the debt of what I owed, what my sin actually deserved, the judgment that my sin deserves, if he can cancel my debt, then I can release the debt of anybody who's hurt me. Um, in the past or is ongoing, even hurting the love of God empowers us to do that. And so, um, but there is power when you declare, I forgive this person that you don't know what you are actually unlocking in the spirit realm for the heart of God that will actually empower the light of Jesus, the revelation of Jesus to pierce through someone's reality, to pierce through maybe the stronghold that has them bound and to give them a revelation of the love and the light of Jesus that will bring them into a place of freedom and into a place of responsiveness 
goodness. And so, um, God, I just want to, I just heard this. God will do the heavy lifting. God is giving us wisdom to align our hearts and grace to align our hearts and our actions and our words with what his heart is. And then he will do the heavy lifting. And so maybe right now you, like I said, you're cut off from your family. You're not, um, in a place where you're able to have those relationships. I just want to encourage you ask God, Lord, what are the keys? God, are there things that you wanting me to declare over them? When, whatever he's saying, say it. And whatever he's doing, do it, okay? And I know it sounds overly simplistic, but this is literally what Jesus modeled. He said what the Father was saying, and he he did what the Father was doing. And this is how God is training us in this season. And I want to encourage you, he wants to meet you in the details. No detail of your life is too small. No mountain is too big that God will not meet you there. So I will just pray for you as I end this. God, I just pray for every family, every heart represented here that will see or run across this video. Jesus, I just thank you, Father, that you are well able. You are well able. God, I just thank you for the release of hope in hearts, God, that you are releasing keys in this season, God, that you're releasing grace so that we can align our hearts with your heart so that you can do the heavy lifting and that you will get all the glory for the prodigals who are returning, for the families who are restored, for the marriages that enter into a place of flourishing in a way that was hard for them even to imagine before because you are far exceedingly above all God, that we can even conceive. So I bless every person here. I pray that every bit of despair and hopelessness would go running and that their hearts would be infused with a fresh revelation of a God with them. Emmanuel, your presence is the X factor in their lives and in their hearts and in their families. In Jesus name. Amen. God bless you guys.